It's time for Tycoons of Small Biz, spotlighting the true backbone of the American economy, the true tycoons of business in America, the owners, founders, and CEOs of small businesses. The show's hosts, Austin Peterson and Landon Mance, are registered representatives of Lincoln Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to today's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. Uh, This show is co-hosted by myself, Austin Peterson, and Landon Mance from Las Vegas. Landon, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. You bet. And we are excited to have uh, today on the show, Kyle McIntosh. And this is a first for titles for Tycoons of Small Biz, President and Creative Excitant. You got it. We will get get more into that, trust me, uh, with Mac 6. And then we've got Jennifer Burwell, Director of Programs, otherwise known as Kyle's Boss. And uh, (laughs) Rain Rain, or Inner, how's that? I don't know how you spell that one, but yes. (laughs) Well, welcome both of you to the show. We're excited to have you on the program. So uh, let's start with uh, Kyle. So Kyle, explain what creative excitement means. And then uh, we always have our guests tell us a little bit about themselves personally. So I I know you, you and I are in a Vistage group together, but uh, I'm sure there are things about you that I don't know. So we typically say, you know, tell us something about you that we may not know. Also tell us about your family and uh, kind of how you got to where you are today. Sure. So I'll start with the creative excitement. Uh, it depends on the day what that means, I guess. And, and we, uh, early on in the, in the company, decided to come up with role titles that, you know, were more for us internally, like, what is, you know, a fun title, but what, is, what do we really bring to the team other than, you know, CEO, VP, operations, what, uh, and really what my strength is that I bring to the team, and it creates messes too, but is this creative approach to thinking and coming up with solutions to problems. And that's where I really get my energy and have a lot of fun. So called it out in the title and uh, people ask about it every once in a while. So I'm sure they do. Yeah. yeah, So I grew up, uh, I was born in Phoenix and lived here until I was seven, Uh, moved to the Philippines for a year and then Canada for four years and then uh, moved back to Arizona and have lived here since. I uh, went to U of A, got a degree in marketing, uh, worked some for-profit and non-profit most recently prior to uh, starting Max 6. Uh, Jen was my boss at a large nonprofit, Leukemia Lymphoma Society. And uh, I only half jokingly say uh, I caught the last year millennial. And so I uh, decided I went to go pay my dues for the nonprofit and uh, go follow that purpose work. But it stuck with me. And the frustration of uh, the constrictions that a nonprofit feels on how they have to run in quotes uh, versus a nonprofit versus the power of a for-profit to really uh, grow a business and grow and expand their reach. And so is there a way to combine these two models, the heart of a nonprofit with the horsepower of a for-profit? And that's really why we started Max six is to explore that concept and work with businesses who had a higher purpose than just making money, but in doing so would be far more successful financially as well in the long term. Yeah, very cool. Jennifer, did you live in the Philippines for a year? No, I cannot beat that. That uh, that's got me beat. I've uh, lived in Arizona my whole life, native, third generation though, so that might be. Oh, there you go. Impressive. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, so I have three small kids, a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old. Um, grew up here my whole life. My um, family, my mom and dad still live here, but my sister um, went to school for pharmacy in, in um, Boston, where my dad's originally from, and so she moved out to the East Coast, and um, I married my husband also, who I met at Team and Training Leukemia Lymphoma Society, when I was Kyle's boss. So Kyle actually (laughs) was there the day that I met my husband. We met him at the same time. Um, And yes, I was Kyle's boss for how many years? Like one or two years, Kyle? Two two years. And and I'm a killer wingman. 
I just want to point that See, out. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Kyle has uh, played a crucial role in, in us um, meeting and, and um, the rest is history. But my husband's family is all from New York. So we spend a decent amount of time as much as we can um, on the East Coast visiting my sister and, and his family. Um, and I, yeah, I went to school for interior design and business management. So I do a lot of design work around Max 6. It's only half kidding because I really don't do a lot of design work um, unless we have a construction project. Um, so I don't use a lot of my interior design experience, but then I went to work for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, was a director of programs there. Kyle left me and I was very sad. Um, we became good friends. And then a couple years later, he said, hey, why don't you come over and um, help? Let's see, what's a good way to say it? Um, uh, wrangle stray cats over at Max 6. And so um, Kyle and I often describe our relationship as he really is the balloon. He is the one who has the big vision, who's who's thinking about the future. And I'm kind of his, his rock for better or worse that ties him to reality in today. Um, and so it's, it's, I've been there for eight years. I run all of our educational programming at Max 6 that all the programming that helps our small businesses inside and outside our community break through ceilings and grow. All right. So I think we've, we've established what the rest of your title should be. It should be director of programs and Kyle McIntosh Wrangler. <laughs> I've tried to retire from that title a few times, but uh, I should just own it. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that should go right on the business card, maybe even on your office door, whatever it takes. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, so you guys haven't met Landon, so I'm going to let Landon actually introduce himself a little bit. This We don't typically do this, but uh, just because I know both of you guys and he doesn't, I'm going to have Landon explain or you know tell you a little bit more about him. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, I live, I live out in Vegas and Austin and I are basically, uh, we're basically partners. You know, we're in the process of, of rebranding and we're going to be kind of bringing our practices together under one you know, one roof, one marketing name. And we are also expanding the practice right now and bringing in several other people and uh, in the process of hiring some additional staff. And uh, so we got some really, really great things going on. And um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I've got uh, twins. So they will be turning one on the 18th. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big deal. We've got a taco guy coming to the house and a bunch of family and friends coming and they're going to get to, you know, um, delve into a, you know, smash cake and make a huge mess. And so should be, should be a lot of fun. So when I'm not, uh, running my financial planning practice out here, out here in Vegas, I am, um, at home, you know, corralling the, <laughs> corralling the twins, giving mama, giving mama a break. Cause, uh, luckily she, uh, is able to stay home and, and raise them. And so we're very, uh, very blessed to uh, be able to let her to do that. But uh, yeah, as I, as I also kind of mentioned earlier when we were chatting, I've had the pleasure of spending quite a bit of time in, uh, you know, over at, at Max 6 and in the studio, but also uh, you guys have been gracious enough to let Austin and I use some of the other uh, rooms as I, I, I just believe maybe there's a little bit of additional availability due to the last uh, 12 months and, uh, I think there's been something going on that has kind of kept some people at, at home a little bit more than, uh, than usual. So thank you guys for uh, allowing us to uh, use some of your space when, it, when it's available. But, you know, uh, for people that don't know, because um, plenty of people listening do not know, uh, what, what is Max 6 and who are you guys and what do you guys do? Sure. So I'll start big picture. Uh, why we exist. Max 6 builds better communities where people and businesses thrive. And we do that through, uh, we have 150,000 square feet of space, office space, co-working space, light manufacturing space, space where people work and create value for other people. And really we've just come up with a model for that space where it's as flexible as it could possibly get for whether it's earlier stage companies or larger companies and just taking that pain point away of, I have no idea what my size of my team is going to be in a year or three years. And the market uh, is asking for five-year leases. So 
how do we offer more flexibility? Well, what we really do to create extra value is creating this community within the companies that are under our roof so that even if I'm in my own office or just a, a desk in a co-working space or I'm in another building making physical products, I know that I have access to other business owners and resources to help grow uh, what I want to uh, with my business and what I really want to create the value in the world. Uh, another uh, sort of leading part of what we do as a business, and I'll let Jen talk about this, is uh, we, we started as a business incubator and we had this physical space, but wanted to be able to both invest into businesses and help them to grow hands-on, uh, what help do you need other than just uh, some money to, to get, you know, get your business to the next level. And so we've taken what we used for that business incubator and, and lots of learning over the last 10 years and created a leadership academy uh, of there's all kinds of programs to help businesses to grow. I'll let Jen talk about that part. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Um, yeah, so just like Kyle said, we took what we learned as an incubator. Um, also, Kyle's father, Scott McIntosh, um, is an incredible leader and a lifelong learner. And he has um, a depth of knowledge from growing his own business and selling it, but also all of the leadership programs that he's been a part of. And what we all kind of collectively realize is there is a lot of resources out there. If you are a multi-million 20 like the bar is like 20 to 50 million dollars there's a lot of resources for executives and their teams and so our goal was really to take some of the things that we've learned and some of the things that Scott have had the opportunity and privilege to be able to be a part of and bring it down closer to the ground to those earlier businesses um, it's kind of the whole great from the start model where if we can instill these practices and give them tools and resources that they otherwise wouldn't be able to attain, they can grow their businesses and hopefully avoid some of the pitfalls um, and understand how to grow teams that are healthy and cohesive and collaborative, but also to build community around it. Because what we know about entrepreneurship and small business is it's it's a lonely job, right? That's, I think, one of the reasons why so many people come to our co-working spaces, even through a pandemic, is because of that connection and collaboration. And so providing a platform and resources for business owners to communicate and talk and share about their problems and issues, but also to provide a place for their teams so their teams can learn and providing resources um, for them. How do we, how do I be the best team member? How do I be the best version of myself? What is wellness? What is a whole employee look like? Um, that was really what we wanted to do and be able to provide that to our small to medium sized businesses that we work with. Very cool, very cool. Well, um, I feel like there's a lot to uh, unpack there. I wanna make sure that we uh, talk more about this uh, leadership uh, program or academy. Uh, I had no clue that you guys did that. That's very cool. I wanna hear more about that. Um, but uh, first, if you would, and Jen, maybe this is a question for, for you. Um, so I love how you guys are talking about this uh, kind of this flexibility and being able to meet these businesses at the stage that, that they are at at that point in time and to be able to help them to create a, a growth plan, you know, moving forward. And it's funny because uh, what uh, Kyle just described, Austin and I are <laughs> in a predicament exactly to what he just said. Um, I have my suite out here in Las Vegas, we're expanding, uh, you know, um, with people out here. So we're trying to figure out if we're going to take over the suite next to mine and, and keep mine or move over there and release mine. And so it's this back and forth game because, uh, you know, I've, I've got to, I'm going to have to sign a new lease and everything. So uh, we certainly understand uh, that pain point that you mentioned. And, uh, appreciate that you guys realize that and are uh, finding uh, creative solutions. So now that being said, uh, help us just understand a little bit more about uh, what that means. So if you have a, you know, a business that uh, maybe is smaller, but they are, are growing and they may need more space and they 
maybe they have an offsite, you know, manufacturing facility or whatnot. How do they kind of uh, collaborate with you guys so that as their situation evolves and changes, you guys can accommodate those uh, changes? Yeah, so I think there's two ways and Kyle fill in what, what I miss, but there's the real estate side and then there's the program side. Um, so for the real estate side, like our ideal customer client um, business owner is really what you just described. Somebody that's um, potentially could be on the smaller side, but is growing. And so that's why we have, we have all of our different spaces within our building. So we have our co-working space where you can start and lease a couple desks and say you have a 12 month lease, but in three months, you're like, wow, my business is exploding. I need to do something different. So because we have all of the different spaces all the way up to 9,000 square feet, private suites, we can transition you into a new space without having to worry about, you know, oh, I got to end that lease and now I got to sign a new lease or how does that all work? Um, and then on the leadership side, we have the different programs that will meet you in the different stages because we know that there are certain, certain thresholds and certain pain points that you're going to grow through as a growing business. And so we have different programs to target where you're at. And also like that community piece of just other peer to peer, Kyle talks about this all the time is when it's not us that's leading it, when it's other business owners who are like, oh yeah, I, I, I dealt with that. This is what I did. Let me connect you. Like that is success for us. And that makes us so happy. And so um, providing that opportunity, um, we've seen so many challenges and opportunities come from just people in our community sharing um, and collaborating. But Kyle, what else did I, I miss? Well, I'll just, I'll just say uh, that is the most fun part of this and what makes this the uh, most expensive MBA you could ever uh, pursue every single day. Uh, I think, I mean, you nailed it, Jen, and I think it goes down even to uh, our leases. They're not called leases. We call them community agreements. And we are, you know, we have them in place so that we can meet what the market is asking for. Someone has a pain point of, I need a place to put my business, but really it's just this agreement between us and this company that we're here for you to help you grow. And so we're not going to have to break a lease if you need to change spaces or grow or contract or whatever that looks like. We're entering into a uh, basically partnership with you to provide space, whether that's in the space you're in currently or other types of space that we have so that throughout your company journey, we can continue to meet your needs. It basically just takes that pain point away uh, you know, on day one or 10 years down the line until you get uh, so much larger that we can't, you know, have you in our buildings, you need to outgrow us. And that's a huge win as well. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Landon already touched on it, but it, it's the flexibility, I think, is a huge deal for companies like ours or many other companies out there, right? Because as it sits right now, there's three of us. Tomorrow, there will be four of us, or sorry, five of us. And then in the next six months, there could be six, seven, eight, or nine of us, right? But the, the office space next to Landon is available today. We're not ready for it today, but in two months, we probably will be ready for it. And we'll have to make you know a decision on how we figure out a solution there. And so it would be nice if Max 6 were in Las Vegas instead of Phoenix, because that's where we are growing our admin staff. We've just got this great pool of candidates in Vegas for whatever reason. I don't know, Austin, I'm lobbying our next location is by an ocean, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, by an ocean means a lot of taxes, just so you know, it's, it's pretty tough to be by an ocean without high taxes. If you look around the country at the states, Florida might be the only, the only uh, oh, Texas, I guess, technically is by the ocean, but yeah, the East Coast and West Coast ocean states have high taxes. Very true. Jen, we, we need to connect offline. Uh, my dad does own uh, a beautiful piece of commercial real estate in Cardiff. I don't know if you've ever been to Cardiff uh, in San Diego. It's a little surfer town. Yes. And uh, he was here in town just a few days ago visiting. And his second story, his, uh, on the first story is Patagonia. And on the second story, it's about maybe four or 5,000 square feet and it is vacant. 
Kyle. And he is looking for a tenant. Uh, just saying. <laughs> Disregard what Austin said about taxes. We'll uh, <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> well, you can cross that bridge when you come to it. Uh, yeah, I know. We there know is people. a big difference, though, right? I mean, Max Six owns real estate, not leases real estate. So that's so. Yeah. That's today. We own all of the real estate, and what we what we're looking at though is to scale we don't necessarily need to own all the real estate or lease it we've got this model for this operating business that is working where we're able to increase the net, net operating income of a building the profitability of each square foot of space in a building and so for this exact example i've got 5000 square foot of space it's vacant it's sitting empty not making anything right now uh I can continue to push and find brokers and fill this space? Or is there a way that I could do something a little bit different with it, introduce a different level of flexibility? And so that, that is the next stage of Max 6 is how do we then go help other building owners to do what we've done, uh, create this model for themselves and help them to manage it and uh, use the 10 years of uh, uh, opportunities and success and failures that we've had to fill that space with all sorts of cool companies. And the other piece I do want to that up for you. <laughs> the other piece I do want to touch on is because you guys are talking about, you know, you're not ready for the space right now, but you need it. And like there's a lot of pressure because it, a new tenant can get moved in and then you've lost the opportunity. And what do you do? And I think that's a really big unique that we do is like we have um, well, we have weekly meetings, the real estate team does about what do we know about our community members and a big part of our jobs and our community manager, Chrissy, is understanding businesses growth. So people will tell us like, hey, in three months, I'm projecting I need this space. So we're constantly figuring out how we can move puzzle pieces around, how we can um, expand for your growth, how we can we understand like who needs what so we can figure out how to best serve the greatest number of um, community members. So when you're inside our space, you can come to us and say, hey, I'm not ready today, but in three months, I think I'm gonna need this. And then that helps us understand and we can start to make a space ready for you when you're ready and you don't feel that, that pressure. We're great at nesting. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, I, th I think it's a unique span, right? I mean, it, it would be awesome if they did that in Vegas. It would be awesome if Landon would just bite the bullet and move to Vegas. <laughs> and then if we can get our other employees to move too, you know. It, move to Vegas or move to Phoenix? I'm sorry, move to Phoenix. Sorry, Phoenix. Yeah, that's what I meant. Mm. I mean, given that uh, the admin that's starting tomorrow's husband is in the military, I think it might be a little bit harder to get him transfer here but never say never right yep absolutely well there's also remote right like we've learned that we can work from wherever so yes yes and we are working through that we talked a little bit about this before the show started but compliance in our industry is a real thing mm -hmm. and security and being in an office where we control the wi-fi and the security is is a big big deal for our compliance team so we're still trying to get over that hurdle of being able to do it remotely, so. Yeah, so an interesting, a little tangent, and then I'll stop talking, but um, my husband works for Charles Schwab and they all went remote, right? And my, my husband's operations um, person for wires and they are a very heavy compliance. And just like for them, like that to shift to all their workers at home, like just mm -hmm. felt like if like, I, I don't know how it's all working and it seems to be working fine, but that just seems like wild. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Yeah. All right. So we've kind of jumped around a little bit, but I want to kind of go back and, and talk about commercial office space since March of last year. Things have been obviously different with the worldwide pandemic. And, you know, you can obviously speak to this, but I've spoken to some commercial real estate brokers and developers as well that have kind of given me some, some feedback on this. But yeah, I think it kind of depends, right? What kind of commercial space you have. I mean, uh, I think it's class A that I'm thinking of, which is like the high rise, super high expensive yep. office space. They've struggled in a big way, but just kind of fill us in on office space in general and, and what it's meant for Max 6 over the last year. Yeah, so speaking of wild, uh, the world has changed forever. It's not going back to how it was. And we'll go back in some ways. Uh, and we've learned a lot where 
uh, to this point earlier about remote work, uh, that's going to be a bigger part of work going forward. And I don't think anyone really knows fully what that means yet, or has studied the ramifications of having a whole workforce at home. And what does that do to your culture and your community and your productivity over a longer period of time? But for now, uh, I mean, everyone went home. Everyone went home and they were working from home unless you were in a uh, some retail, some, uh, I mean, manufacturing, you have to go in, you have to make physical products. Uh, and then it just depended per company on sort of what their risk profile was, what they're comfortable with, what their workforce was asking for, whether they came back or not. And uh, we've seen some people come back. We've seen, uh, I mean, quite a few people come back over time. And But what that hasn't looked like is that uh, all of them came back full time. And so I think everybody's kind of experimenting on how do we navigate uh, this new world, uh, understanding how we have the virtual products and access to each other, whether we're sitting in the same room or not. We're sitting on this show with people in multiple states uh, uh, and in the same room and in the same state. It's, I mean, we can connect in all sorts of different ways. Uh, really, I mean, one of the uniques that we have is that we're a B-class space. And so when you're talking about A-class space, uh, the economy's struggling uh, to a degree, and all of a sudden you're uh, sitting there asking questions like, why am I paying so much money for this space? Do I really need to be doing that? We're well positioned for those companies that need a higher level of flexibility, access to A-class amenities, uh, but don't want to be paying as much in rent per month, as well as if the economy is shifting in the other direction, these C-class spaces that, hey, I, w I want a nicer space. I want access to uh, more availability of resources. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm not really sure if I can afford it yet. We offer the flexibility to move in the other direction as well to try something without having to really own all of the resources. You have access to meeting spaces without having to pay the square footage of those being in your space. Uh, so the market is changing. Uh, no one really knows what it's going to look like. It seems like it's picking up again, both in uh, real numbers and anecdotally speaking to brokers and, and just talking about that. But I think it's going to look very different. I think uh, you hear companies like uh, GoDaddy, 17,000 uh, human beings across the entire world that they told you never have to come back into the office if you don't need if you don't want to. But what is it going to look like when they have teams of 10 that need to be together to accomplish their tasks to get things done to, to have the level of productivity. And so I think you're going to see more options similar to what we have in the co working spaces where there's this, there's this turnkey ready place for smaller team or you know mid-sized teams of people to grow without having to own the office space yeah yeah i think it's gonna it's it's gonna adjust for sure because the reality is there are a lot of things we can do virtually right i think we talked about it last week when i was on your show about how many clients even in their well into their 80s that i meet with virtually you know that that never would have been a thought in the past um, it was either they came to my office or I went to their house and I only went to their house if I was worried about them driving to get to my office. Right. And so it, uh, I think it's changed quite a bit, but the reality is, like you said, a, a 10 person team that needs to be together to accomplish things. There are certain things that you just can't do as well virtually. You can try, but it, there's social cues, there's you know, whatever, putting something on a table together and trying to draw something out or let's look at it this way and, and make changes, it, there is still going to be a need for in-person for most companies. I think we're in, a, we're in a little bit of an awkward phase right now with the technology that moves so fast to meet the needs when we had to work from home. I'm seeing cool stuff. I got a virtual reality headset where there's ways that you can meet with teams and design products as if you're in front of each other. And I think that's coming, mm. but we're not quite there yet. And so for now, everybody's doing the best they can. And the best they can is just going to continue to get better as more people introduce products and offerings that, that continue to meet the flexibility needs. Yeah. 
I'm also seeing a lot of research or um, stories, things start to come out about our young, the youngest people in our workforce who are new to the professional environment and are trying to understand and learn what it is to work on a team or with a group or in a professional environment. And so I think they're suffering a lot too, because if they're at home siloed, they're not getting that connection that some of us that have been in the workforce for longer kind of understand. They don't understand how to participate in meetings. It's easier to tune out on Zoom. And so I think there's gonna be um, a big need for, for the younger workforce to get back. And also they, they really do want that social interaction. Um, and I think it's gonna be a big challenge for companies to figure out how to balance like the GoDaddies of the world. And that's what I'm seeing a lot of policies that are come back if you want to, or you need to, but there's no longer this requirement. But as companies try to manage that, I think real estate's gonna adjust. They're not gonna need as much space, but we have been seeing big companies offering um, stipends or me co-working memberships for those teams who need that space or the younger people, or it doesn't, it's not just younger people, but um, people who are needing that social interaction or that break to be able to get up and see somebody when they're, you know, going to get another cup of coffee. So um, I feel very optimistic for spaces like ours. If we were sitting with the class A real estate with high rise on the ocean, <laughs> I might be a little nervous, but <laughs> Uh, but not your dad, Landon. I'm sure yeah, he'll right. be fine. But right. Landon's <laughs> inheritance just went by the wayside. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, it didn't, because now I know these folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! All right. So let's see. What do we want to talk about next? So I, I think, um, really, what makes you guys unique, and you hit on the the leadership academy programs, but. You know, there, there are co-working spaces out there. We all know the names, the WeWorks, the Galvanized, you know, whatever. And, and they still offer some peer-to-peer -peer interaction, and they do try to market to that. But what you guys do, as a guy from the outside looking in, in my opinion, is, you know, that times five or ten, right? So maybe kind of just give us an example of what the Leadership Academy looks like you know, maybe say, you know, if you're a brand new single person startup entrepreneur and how you would engage that person compared to a five person company and, and how they engage the Leadership Academy. Yeah, sure. So we have lunch and learns every Wednesday that are free to our community and it's on a variety of different topics um, that are in that would interest small um, businesses. So you can attend if that's all, if you're a solopreneur and you just want to get some skills, you can attend those Wednesday lunches. Um, we also have half day and full day workshops. So once you start to build a team, then we, our sweet spot is really helping people understand how to work better together and be higher performing. So then that moves to our half day and our full day workshops where we do things, we do different assessments. We do communication exercises. This is how I communicate. Now I need to understand how you communicate and how can we work better together. Um, we go through the five components of team performance. So we have a variety of those, um, but for a team that's really growing and wanting to hire and um, excel quickly, we have an eight week course, which is all around high performing teams. And it goes through um, the company's values. And first we work with the leaders. Um, do you have values? Have you articulated them? Um, are they shared by all? So we go through that process. What's your vision, all of that. And then we make sure that everybody on the team understands it, understands their role, and then understands how to be a great team player and what role they play in the organization. Because when you're talking with these smaller companies, like every person makes a huge impact. So everyone needs to be on the same page. They need to understand how to communicate with each other. They need to have high levels of trust. They need to be able to be open and honest and vulnerable and all of these things. And um, it's an amazing amount, like, Kyle and I always talk about like, like businesses are just people, but people have so many issues, like small teams, like they, there's just a lot to work through. And so providing those tools and a place to come and talk about those issues in an environment where everyone feels safe and heard that can really accelerate growth because a lot of times it's things that leaders are so focused on. They need to grow their business. They need to grow sales. They need to grow revenue. And they don't necessarily know or want to be managers of their people. And so how do we educate and train all of the people in the organization to be their 
not to be their to be their own leader and they don't have to be like, I'm a leader, I'm doing it all on my own, but at least take some ownership and see how they fit into the puzzle. Um, and so that's what our eight week course does. And then on top of that, we also do strategic planning um, with companies. So really what is your vision? What, what are you trying to achieve? What is your 10 year target? What is, what is a picture look like? What's your one year goals? Um, what can we do in the next 90 days? And so we help with the leadership team really setting that. And then our eight week course really drills it down into the different employees. Um, and what is it? What's today, the 30th? On April 1st, you've heard it here first, we are launching um, our virtual platform um, so we can really meet people wherever they are. And it's free to all of our members who are inside our spaces. Um, but we're also going to be offering a membership model to outside businesses because I do a lot of work with companies that are not necessarily residing inside Max 6. And so it's going to be a platform that has all of our resources, all of the tools, presentations we've done before, and a community um, and a self-paced learning um, platform so that you can, um, when you are a new member to Max 6, and if you have a team of 10 or team of five, or you're just yourself and you want access to those resources, what we found is that People love them, but they want to be able to do it on their own time because entrepreneurs are so busy. So um, you can log in. It's all self-paced. We'll be doing some live teaching as well. Um, and it's also an added benefit that you can provide to your employees. So when you're at Max 6, now you're able to, you can provide a gym that you weren't able to necessarily for gym memberships for all of your people because we have a gym on site. We have a personal trainer three days a week that they have access to. Now they have this personal and professional leadership development platform that they can um, use and, and attend these live trainings. So it's a lot of added benefits. So you can provide more benefits for your employees that you wouldn't otherwise be able to in another place. So I'm excited um, for April 1st, which it's not an April Fool's joke. It's an <laughs> unfortunate date for our launch, but um I think it has a lot of history in the Macintosh family, April 1st. So I think it's a, going to be a special day. Absolutely. Yeah. That April 1st, uh, years and years ago, the day my dad bought, uh, the engineering company that he, that he grew and sold and also not an April fool's joke, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that sometimes. I think what Jen described is exactly right. And I think the two biggest learnings we've had over the last 10 years are, uh, we started out trying to help companies with everything, marketing, sales, legal, finance, whatever it was that a company needs. And we'd find outside partners that were great at that, but we just tried to help with everything. And what we found is where we could have our greatest impact was and is with the people and creating higher performing teams, a great culture, uh, solving people issues, all that people stuff. It's 80% of the issues in a business and it's, it's, almost 100% of the opportunities. And so how do we just lop off everything that we were trying to do? There's other people that are great at that stuff and focus on the people side of the business and making that strong. When that's strong, a business can do anything. And the other one is, and the other co-working spaces that are in Phoenix and Arizona, all over the place, they're great. Like they, they're all friends. Uh, you know, we, we have a friendly rivalry and, you know, it's, it's all good, but, and they have their own specialties that they do, which is cool. But I think one of the things that's really switched and particularly over the pandemic for us is we looked at these buildings as an asset that was the core of our business. We have this space where we can transactionally rent square feet to people and it, what we're really offering though isn't space it's a place it's a place where a place where you can house your business a place where you can grow your employees a place where they can show up and not just do a job but do work that they love live their full lives to jen's point be healthy in ways personally professionally physically mentally emotionally and connect them to resources there so that we start to solve this bigger problem in the united states of uh 85% of people are showing up to work either disengaged or actively disengaged. And how do we start to move the needle on that so that uh, work becomes this thing that's filling people's buckets, giving them energy, giving them a sense of purpose. Uh, and each company that they're working for that's a part of our, our this place that we have here 
is creating so much more value for the world. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a unique spin on on things. And and when you put it that way, where it is really about the whole person, the employee, you know, as an individual and helping them to find fulfillment in, in what they do day to day, right? Because we all know we spend more time at work than we do with our own families. And so if there's a way to kind of help us to be healthy, both physically and mentally, and maybe even spiritually and emotionally, you know, along the way, that would be great. And knowing Kyle, I kind of wonder when this co-working space right outside here, you know, right outside the studio will be turned into a hockey rink. Oh, there's a curling building right up the street that's <laughs> just asking for a second manufacturing location <laughs> slash hockey rink. <laughs> yeah, and considering both of our sons play hockey, although Kyle, you made, didn't you make a promise? Well, who did you make promise to that you were going to be back on skates? I am stretching every morning to get ready for this, my, my return to the ice. Okay. Yeah, we got, we got to give him a little bit of uh, time here, though, because didn't you recently have a fall and hurt some ribs? <laughs> I fell on a run, so yeah, I, I'm prone but... to things like that. But <laughs> on the ice, it's totally different. You get me on two eighth-inch bl eighth inch blades of steel, and I got all the balance of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Video or it didn't happen. You got it. <laughs> All right, Landon, I can see the, the wheels spinning. Yeah, you know, I, I, I just was, I've been thinking a lot during this conversation for the last 15 or 20 minutes. I'd, I'd love to just kind of get your guys' take on, on this and, and kind of the, what your guys' feelings are on, on the, the pulse of what I'm going to describe so, uh, you know, Austin and I, I, I would consider Austin and I to be very uh, collaborative people. Uh, we love to collaborate with, you know, each other and our staff and other people that do what, what we do because we uh, are very much dedicated to the, uh, you know, the clients that we, we serve and, you know, constantly trying to better ourselves. And we do believe uh, that uh, although we are a little bit more limited, you know, geographically, he's in, uh, he's in Arizona, I'm in Nevada. So obviously there's some limitations there, but Austin and I do try to get together in person uh, as frequent, frequently as we can. But I'm, I'm curious as to what you guys are seeing now that uh, a lot of people have been uh, not just working from home, but spending a significant uh, amount of additional time at home, you know, due to the environment that we've been in in the last year. So are you guys seeing now that we are, we, we're coming out of this, you know, um, to some, to some degree, are people really um, seeking that, that in-person collaboration or do you guys feel like people uh, really are used to this environment of, of, you know, collaborating with people mostly virtually and that they seem to be more comfortable and like that. So I'm just, I'm curious what you guys is, you know, thoughts are on that. I think it depends who you ask. I mean, I think if you could really get to the answer of that question, what it boils down to, I think it could have helped us in the last election we had. I think, I mean, communication and collaboration and things that we're struggling with with uh, human beings in general and I don't think there's consensus on it um, there's two things I can speak to at least anecdotally for now and one is I see people come back into the space after a year that have been basically at home for a year and I see people you know like that who both are excited and who are scared. And I don't know what it's like to be out. I feel like the virus is going to attack me. I, you know, I don't know what's around every corner and I've gotten comfortable at home and kind of figured it out. And in both cases, I think there's this kind of human part of it that happens where they start to interact with human beings in person again. And you just see this light, this little fire get you know, rekindled. And it's not like that needs to be uh, 
that they need to be in the office all the time. But I think they start to see that, oh, I've been missing something. There's part of the human experience that I haven't been connected to in some time. And so I think what we're figuring out is exactly what that looks like, especially if, uh, an example, Jen hasn't worked full time in the office in over a year as a part of our team. How do we, and Jen has told us, I am way more productive at home with, <laughs> without all of you guys bothering me all the time and throwing monkey wrenches in, into what I'm doing. How do we give someone like Jen the ability to be more productive in a space that makes sense for her and have this ability to come in uh, often enough that you maintain that connection, that human connection, that, that sort of part you miss of, uh, I can just pop into your office and stop in and talk to you about something. So I think we'll see more people coming back. It's not, I don't think it'll be that there's whole workforces that'll just stay home. I think there are some. Uh, we're also in about three weeks, uh, we're three weeks out from introducing some new technology around here for in-person and virtual together, a mix. So whether that's meetings, events, I mean, full on conferences that we could put together uh, for whether it's people's comfort or just ease of access to people that live anywhere in the world. Uh, we can, you know, we can offer flexible offerings to anybody and meet them where they're at. But uh, I think it's going to be a mix going forward. And I think it's, uh, it's cool. We're going to have access to more people from all over the world and more people are going to have access to more resources regardless of where it's located. Yeah. And I would just add, um, Mackenzie has been doing a bunch of studies on this as much as information is available. And I think um, what they're predicting is um, we were on this work remotely path, but there was a lot of organizations and big companies who were saying, I don't trust my workforce. Um, they weren't overtly saying that, but you know, there was a lot of fear around. I don't, is anyone going to get anything done? Um, I don't know that I want to give that much freedom. Like we, we need people in the office so I can see them and see their work. And the pandemic fast forwarded that for us. And so I think what largely has been shown is that people can work remotely pretty successfully. There are definitely times where you have to be in person. So what I see going forward and, and some of the things that I'm reading is that people want the option to do either or, but they, they, but flexibility is going to start to become more of the norm. And it's also going to be a recruitment um, tool for companies to recruit top talent because if they're able to give flexibility. So, you know, how wild is it? Like if we weren't in a pandemic and we could travel, like if I, um, I had somebody that I was working with the other day who took their family to a beach vacation. Can you tell there's a theme? I really just need to go to the ocean. But she was able to make sure she had a strong internet connection, was able to work, but also able to take her family on this trip and have a really nice balance of work life. So she didn't feel overwhelmed when she got back with all the stuff I had to get done. And I think that is more of what people are, are going to want. And I think that's what organizations are trying to figure out how to make that work for them. Um, but there are definitely times and places where people need to be together. And so I don't think that that's going away anytime soon. Um, but I think all of the trends that were there in, in workforce kind of just got accelerated in the last 12 months and we got stress tested <laughs> in ways that I think all of us would prefer didn't necessarily happen. Yeah, yeah, well, very well said. I, I think uh, we all can agree with everything that you that you said there, you know, uh, maybe this question is for Kyle. Uh, Kyle, so, um, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about like the future of commercial real estate and I, I would love to get your thoughts on this. So companies that, uh, that own and lease and, and rent, you know, commercial real estate, it, it appears that, you um, they are going to continue to um, face some pretty serious dilemmas, right? Uh, because not everybody is going to be as innovative and flexible as you know you guys are at Max Six, which I would I would imagine could create some really 
serious opportunities for you guys because uh, as these companies transition to this uh, mix of in-person and virtual, you know, uh, working, that uh, the demand for commercial real estate, uh, I, I would think, will just continue to go down. So I, I guess my first question is, do you see that already starting to un, unfold? And uh, you know, what does it what does it look like in the next couple years for those spaces? So prior to the pandemic, uh, the estimation was that we were probably at five to ten percent of the capacity of what co-working spaces would be as a percentage of commercial real estate in the next ten years. It seems like it's exploding because it's sort of a novel concept still, and it's new, and people hear about these new spaces, but it's the tip, tip, tip of the iceberg of mm -hmm. of what it's going to look like. I think. Uh, I think it's not going to be each space as novel from one another and as necessarily standing on their design of the space as much as just a tool that building owners use to utilize their space more effectively to offer more flexibility. Because I think you're exactly right that the market's already started asking for it. Uh, there's been enough testing to see that it, it works. It's not just a place where people are drinking beer and playing ping pong all the time. And it's, uh, it's, it's a way that it, it's, a, it's a fit for certain businesses where they're at to accomplish what they need to accomplish to get to a next level. As opposed to just, here's a well-designed space that aesthetically meets the needs of my business. It's a real tool to help them grow. And so I think we've only begun to see uh, this co-working slash flexible space model uh, enter the market, which is really going to be everywhere in the coming years, in the coming five, 10 years, probably. What I think people are a little bit scared about in the next year or two is how do we do that with a flexible open space with, you know, desks that are close together while we're still coming out of this pandemic. And so I think we're all figuring out ways that uh, other than pulling the roof off this place, we can't, com we can't really make it 100% safe. But what are all the things we can do to mitigate as much risk as possible, make that risk known, and then people can make their own choices on, hey, this space works for me or not. But it's just something in the market that's going to grow and grow and grow uh, with, with demand. I think there's been demand for it for a long time, but businesses didn't really know how to ask for this type of space because there wasn't anything like this in the market. It was all uh, long-term leases and, and uh, on dedicated space, uh, you know, it's out there now. And so if a building is sitting there with, uh, you know, large spaces and five-year leases, they're going to get people, they're going to get companies that just leave. They, they can't serve their needs anymore because they don't have that level of flexibility. So they're going to have to start adding it uh, to be competitive in the market. Yeah, and I think what you've just told us a, a few minutes ago is that you took it even one step further and you're now offering these courses that start on April 1st to people who aren't even quite ready to be in a space, right? Either they're not ready from fear of the virus or feeling comfortable of, of being here, but also maybe they're just not quite ready for the expense of a full-blown office, but they do understand the importance of what it is that you guys bring to them as an entrepreneur to help them build their business. Absolutely. And the two-story building that we're sitting in here right now in a year will be an 18-story building, 16 stories virtual. Uh, what's the difference? I mean, you have this resource where you can come and use a physical space, but if you don't need it all the time, you still have access to each other and these programs and this help and resources to grow. Uh, there's ways to connect people and visually make it seem like we're all a part of the same place, the same space. Uh, and I mean, that's, I think that's going to be a big part of the market as well. Yeah, and I, I think of that. So as soon as you say something like that, right? So 16 stories that are virtual, you're essentially saying we've got that many more people or businesses that are paying for the services that we provide. 
but you're doing it in a smaller footprint. And so from a banking standpoint, I look at it and the bank's got to say, my goodness, how much revenue are they generating per square foot? You know what? These guys have shown me that they can go out and do this 15 times more, right? So maybe you never buy any more real estate or maybe you buy other buildings that are similar to this, but because you're getting, you know, what, eight times as many or nine times as many tenants, if you will, in the, in the building as a normal building, that makes for a, a pretty good story from an investment standpoint. We could go another, we can go buy another building if we want to, but not because we have to, to grow anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll just make a quick comment here as we come kind of come to a close, but I, I love just going off of that, uh, off of that theme there. Um, you know, it seems like you, you guys have just done a phenomenal job of, you know, we hear this term, you know, a win-win relationship, you know, get thrown around a lot. And I, I don't think a lot of people really know what that means, you know, because they're really just in it for the win for themselves. But uh, it seems like you guys have really, um, uh, really done a, a wonderful job of making this a win-win for all the parties that are involved and and really being innovative and taking this to this level that uh, I mean I've been coming to your guys' studio or to your to your building specifically into into Karen's studio for close to a year and I had no idea that you guys did all this cool stuff and so I just uh, I just want to applaud you guys for what you're doing because. Uh, I think it is extremely relevant and it's uh, meaningful. And uh, Austin and I are all about uh, supporting other, you know, businesses that are supporting businesses. So uh, please uh, keep up, keep up the good work and doing what you guys are doing. And it seems like you guys have a really uh, successful road ahead of you guys. So, so thank you guys. Thank you, Landon. And I hope that now that you know that this resource is in Arizona, we'll see you uh, full time at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Get you the 20 later for that. Yeah. Kyle's like a pack animal. He needs everyone around him at all times. So, <laughs> you know, I, actually, I'll just close it out and, let, and then let you guys, uh, you know, kind of give us the best place to get a hold of you guys for those entrepreneurs that are listening and, and have need for the services and or space that you guys that you guys bring. But, you know, the, the one thing that that we didn't kind of hit on is, you know, there's still a social aspect. Most people in business, 80% or more of their social life comes from people that they work with. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I do think that it is going to have to be this balance going forward. It, it's not great for people mentally to be in their houses all the time working and only interacting with people on a virtual basis. So I, I do think that those in-person events Either it's just the events or they're coming for the lunch and learn or whatever it is that you guys are doing. But that social aspect is, is super important for business owners. Absolutely. All right. So who wants to give us the commercial on where to find you guys? Oh, I'm getting pointed at. So I guess that's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can find us at max6.com and as in Mary AC, the number six.com. And then um, the best way to connect with me is probably LinkedIn, Jennifer Burwell, B as in boy, you are W E L L and I will be sure to connect and Kyle, we can also find you. I guess you could talk for yourself too. Yeah. Kyle McIntosh <laughs> on LinkedIn and uh, yeah, Jen said at max com. All right. Thank you so much for being here guys. We really appreciated the conversation and look forward to seeing what uh, the next couple of years holds for max six. Thank you. Thanks Thank so you guys. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Peterson and Landon Mance. Austin and Landon are comprehensive financial planning professionals specializing in financial, estate, and succession planning for small business owners. Austin and Landon have offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and represent clients in 14 states throughout the country. Join Austin Landon and the Featured Tycoons live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. right here on Business Radio X and your favorite podcast platform.